Ready to dive into a new deep dive? We're gonna be looking at these excerpts you've all sent in from pharmaceutical dosage forms. Really interesting stuff, actually. I mean, we all rely on these dosage forms, but how often do we think about what goes into them? That's so true. We pop a pill or measure out a powder without a second thought. So today, we're going deep into the world of solid dosage forms. Exactly. We're going to unpack why these forms exist, what makes them work, and even touch upon how they're made. Let's get right into it then. Um, so, first things first. Why solids? I mean, liquids seem way easier to swallow. You'd think so, right. But there are actually some really compelling reasons why solid forms are so prevalent. The source we're looking at, it highlights advantages like stability and precise dosing as key factors. Stability and precise dosing. Okay. Those sound important, but what do those actually mean for, like, the average person taking their meds? Well, think about a bottle of cough syrup, right? You know how it expires after a while? Yeah. That's because liquid forms tend to degrade faster than solids. Solid medications, they generally have a much longer shelf life, which means fewer trips to the pharmacy, less waste. And probably some cost savings too, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And then there's the accuracy factor. When you take a tablet, you're getting a very specific measured dose of the medication. Which is super important for certain medications. Oh, absolutely. You know, where even a tiny variation could make a big difference. Right. Consistency is key. I mean, I've definitely eyeballed a teaspoon of cough syrup before, and let's just say my measurements weren't exactly precise. Uh-huh. We've all been there. But yeah, with solid forms, you eliminate that guesswork. So we've established that solids have some clear advantages, but I'm guessing there are also some drawbacks, right? Nothing's perfect. You're absolutely right. There are always trade-offs. But before we dive into those, let's talk about a specific type of solid dosage form. Powders. Powders. Okay, so we've got a lot to unpack there. Bulk powders, those little packets you mix with water, even those capsules filled with powder. So many variations. And the source designs them as, and I'm quoting here, a dry, solid substance consisting of a large number of finely divided particles. So basically, it's all about those tiny particles. What makes them so great? Well, one big win is their chemical stability. Just like we talked about with shelf life earlier, powders tend to be very stable over time. Gotcha. So longer shelf life, less waste. Checks out. What else? They also dissolve super fast in the body. That's because those tiny particles, they have a much greater surface area, which means faster breakdown and absorption. Ah, uh, that makes sense. So if you need a medication to act quickly, powders are a good option. But I can't help but wonder, what's the catch? Well, taste can be a big one. Ah, uh, yeah. Think about it. You're essentially swallowing a concentrated dose of the drug mm. and some medications. Let's just say they don't win any awards in the flavor department. Yeah, no kidding. Especially for kids, that could be a deal breaker. Definitely. And then there's the issue of dosage precision. Mm. Especially with potent drugs that are given in very small doses, it's much harder to accurately measure out, say, a few milligrams of powder. Command to just splitting a tablet or something. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. So I've got powders down. But the source also mentions some cool applications like dusting powders and those dry powder inhalers. Tell me more about those. Sure. So with dusting powders, it's all about particle size. They're specially formulated to be super fine, almost microscopic. And why is that so important? Well, that's what allows them to distribute evenly over the skin, absorb moisture, and do their job effectively. So it's not just about making the powder feel nice, it's actually crucial for its function. Exactly. Clever. And what about those dry powder inhalers? Well, those are designed for targeted delivery to the lungs, which is essential for people with asthma or other respiratory conditions where you really need to get that medication directly to the source. Right to the lungs where it needs to work. Exactly. And to achieve that targeted delivery, the powder needs some really specific characteristics. Like what? We're talking about really precise control over things like the flow properties of the powder, yeah. the particle size, all of that, to make sure it reaches those tiny air sacs in the lungs. Wow. So those inhalers, they're more high tech than they seem. Absolutely. There's a lot of engineering that goes into making those little devices work effectively. That's fascinating. So we've talked about powders, but what if we could take those benefits even further? That's where granules come in. Granules. OK, I've heard that term before, but what are they exactly? Think of them like this. Granules are essentially powders that have gone through an extra step, a process called granulation. Granulation, does that have something to do with like clumping the particles together? You got it. Imagine taking a bunch of those individual powder particles 
and sort of sticking them together to form larger granules, kind of like making those little clumps of sand you see at the beach. Okay, so it's about giving those loose powders a bit more structure. Precisely. And that structure, it makes a world of difference. The sorts we're looking at highlight several advantages of granules over powders, things like better flowability, stability, and wettability. Okay, so break those down for me. Why are those properties so important? Sure, let's start with flowability. Imagine you're trying to fill thousands of capsules with powder, but the powder is clumpy and doesn't flow smoothly. Sounds like a recipe for disaster. Exactly. Granules, on the other hand, they flow much more easily and consistently, which is crucial for efficient manufacturing. And for you, the consumer, that often translates into more affordable medication. Got it. So smoother production equals cost savings makes sense. But what about stability? Doesn't clumping those particles together make them more likely to, like, degrade or something? It's actually the opposite. Granulation can improve stability, especially in environments with fluctuating humidity. Really? How so? Well, think about those individual powder particles. They're more exposed to moisture in the air, which can cause them to break down faster. But when they're all clumped together as granules, they've got a bit of protection. Huh. So those granules are like a united front against moisture. Exactly. And then there's wettability, which basically means how easily something can be wetted by a liquid. And why is that important for medication? Because for a drug to work, it needs to dissolve properly in the body. Granules, they tend to disperse much better in liquids, which oh. means they dissolve faster and ultimately work more effectively. Okay, that makes sense. It's all about getting that medication to do its job. Precisely. And speaking of getting things to dissolve quickly, have you ever tried those effervescent tablets that fizz like crazy in water? Oh, yeah. Those are so fun to watch dissolve. It's like a little science experiment in a glass. Right. And that fizz, it's not just for show. Remember that effervescent couple we talked about earlier, the sodium bicarbonate and citric acid? I think so, vaguely. Well, when those ingredients hit the water, they react and produce carbon dioxide gas, which creates those awesome bubbles. Ah, that's right. Chemistry in action. Exactly. And that fizzing action... It actually serves a really practical purpose, too. What do you mean? Well, it helps to mask the taste of the medication. Think about it. We've right. all had those moments where we have to choke down some awful-tasting medicine. And this is just one way that pharmaceutical science tries to make that experience a little less terrible. I can definitely get behind that. So we've got powders, granules, even a bit of fizz in the mix. What about the OG solid dosage form pills? Where do they fit into all of this? Ah, yes, pills. They're definitely a classic. But, you know, their preparation used to be surprisingly manual. What do you mean? Well, back in the day, imagine grinding the ingredients using a mortar and pestle, then rolling them into a cylinder and dividing that cylinder into equal portions. Wow, that sounds incredibly time-consuming. It was. And it wasn't exactly the most precise method either. No wonder pills have evolved over the years. Exactly. And aside from the laborious preparation, traditional pills have a couple of other drawbacks, too. For one, they tend to disintegrate pretty slowly, which can delay the release of the medication. And delay the effects of the medication. Right. And if they're not stored properly, they can harden over time, which also affects how well they dissolve in the body. Interesting. So are pills even still relevant, then, with all these drawbacks? Oh, absolutely. Pills are still widely used. But as with many things in medicine, there have been improvements and innovations. One really cool example of this is the rise of pellets as a dosage form. Pellets? I've never really thought about those before. What are they exactly? So basically, pellets are these tiny little spheres, each containing a precise dose of the medication. The source defines them as small, free-flowing spherical units prepared by an agglomeration of fine powders. Okay, so they're like miniature versions of capsules. Exactly. And don't let their small size fool you. They come with some really big advantages. So it's like they've taken the whole concept of a capsule and just shrunk it down. In a way, yeah. And that tiny size comes with some big advantages, like you said. One of the most exciting is the whole concept of controlled release. Controlled release. So you're talking about being able to fine tune when and how the medication is actually released in the body. You got it. By coating those pellets with different polymers, you can control the rate at which the drug is released. So think about medications that need to be taken over a long period, like pain relievers or drugs for chronic conditions. Instead of having to pop pills every few hours. Exactly. You could potentially take just one dose, and those little pellets would take care of releasing the medication gradually throughout the day. Wow, that's amazing. Talk about convenient. But the source also mentioned something about pellets and incompatible drugs. What's that all about? Okay, so 
You know how some medications can interact negatively with each other, right? Yeah, like they say you shouldn't mix certain medications. Right. Well, with pellets, you can actually encapsulate those incompatible drugs separately, but deliver them together in a single capsule. Wait, so it's like having those multi-compartment pillboxes, but on a microscopic level. Exactly. It's a pretty elegant solution to a tricky problem. That's really cool. So pellets, they're like the tiny but mighty superheroes of drug delivery. I like that. Oh. And there are even more benefits. They're great for flow properties. Remember our discussion about granules? Yeah, I remember. Plus, some people find it easier to swallow several small pellets than one big tablet. Which is a big plus for folks who have trouble with larger pills. Exactly. It's all about making medication easier and more effective for patients. It's amazing how much thought goes into these things. But how do they even make pellets? I mean, those things are tiny. It's a pretty intricate process. The source mentions methods like extrusion, spherinization, fluid bed processing, each one using specialized equipment to create those perfectly uniform spheres. Wow, so it's safe to say there's a lot of engineering behind the scenes. It makes you wonder, what's next for dosage forms? What does the future hold? That's the million dollar question. And it's something researchers are actively exploring. Imagine a world where medications are tailored to your unique genetic makeup. Personalized medicine, that sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. It might sound futuristic, but the building blocks are already there. There are incredible advancements happening in pharmacogenomics, which studies how your genes can affect your response to drugs. And 3D printing is another game changer. 3D printed pills. Yeah. Wow. I know, right? Mm. It's already being used to create pills with really complex shapes and personalized doses, even combine multiple medications into a single tablet. So someone could potentially take just one 3D printed pill tailored to their specific needs. Exactly. And that could be life changing for people who rely on multiple medications. Wow. From powders to personalized 3D printed medicine, it's incredible to see how far we've come. And how far we'll go. The future of drug delivery is looking very exciting. Well, I for one can't wait to see what they come up with next. It's been fascinating to dive into the world of solid dosage forms. Who knew there was so much to learn about pills, powders, and everything in between. Right. And hopefully the next time our listeners reach for their medication, they'll have a whole new appreciation for the science and ingenuity packed into those little doses. Totally. And that wraps up another deep dive. As always, a huge thanks to our expert for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to be here. And to all our listeners, keep those questions coming. And we'll be back soon with another deep dive into a topic that's got you curious.